How's it going guys? This is Cliff from uh, Lensport and uh, today we're going to be building up a recon ski bike and kind of walk you through the process of uh, how it's going to ship to your house and uh, what you got to do to get on the slopes. So each of the bikes are going to be coming with uh, both the rear shock manual from DN DNM and also the RST owner's manual. We'll discuss a little bit about that stuff later. And everything's kind of individually packaged. We got our handlebars right here. We got our foot pegs. Our bolt, two washers. Oh, and the fun part. And frame. All headset parts are kept with the fork, so you can just unwrap the frame. There we go, we got medium black recon. Next piece of packaging is going to be our fork. So everything's kind of, you know, we're going to go through the assembly of this, but you know, it will come to you um, essentially in the order that it should be going onto the bike. And our last piece here is going to be the ski set, along with your ski bolts and ski leash bolts with a nice little sticker. First things we're going to do <clears throat> install the seat post. You know, apply a little bit of grease to your seat tube. Grease the seat tube instead of the seat post. That way when you push it in you're not going to scrape off most of the grease on the post. But please remember you know, you're going to have to maintain a certain height here for proper loading on the lift. And then also very important that we're getting insertion depth past the top tube. Therefore, you know, if you do come down onto that seat under load, um, we have a, you know, correct amount of seat posts inserted into the frame. Next thing we're going to go on to is getting your fork on. As I said, all this ships to you assembled in the order. that we're going to install it on the bike. Once again, good to take just a little bit of grease. Basically we're looking to create a little bit of a water barrier. Dropping this bearing in, we got this little angle here. You know, you can kind of see how the bearing is shaped. It's going to sit down and sit on that race and turn. And come around and just apply a little bit of grease inside the cup as well. Once again to the top here. Got my bars ready. Come in, same deal on the bearing. Upper bearing, when you look at how it is, you know how it sits, it's going to sit opposite of the lower. That way we're engaging these races. You got this little angle here that is going to rest this part of the bearing. Slide that fork through. Got the lower bearing in the proper orientation. This point here, as you play around with the sizing on your bike and set up, um, you know, you're going to be able to <clears throat> set your spacers at different points. And we're going to, let's do that. We're going to do a you know, 20 mil and a 10 mil there. Throw that guy on the top. That way we uh, give ourselves a little bit of clearance when we put down this top cap and compress everything together. This point here, we're just gonna snug things. We're gonna straighten the bars and we can align these logos on the top cap when the bike is on the ground with skis. So next we're gonna just take a real quick look at your stem plate. Uh, when uh, the bars come assembled, 
on the stem already. Um, once we've installed it onto the fork, um, you know, we will want to look that, you know, we're going to ha want to have a pretty close even gap on both, uh, both sides of this stem. Uh, and then, uh, you know, you want to snug those down. Uh, you know, the torque spec is going to be five to six Newton meters. Um, and when we snug it, you're going to want to go alternate. Next, we're going to put on the uh, foot pegs. Undo this bolt. This is not required, but you can put a little bit of grease on here. You know, the foot pegs, that way if the eye ever shift on you, which they shouldn't if they're tightened properly. But um, it is nice if you ever do want to reposition them and stuff. A little bit of grease on those threads might help get that bolt loose after they've been in the snow all season. Um, there's a theme with the bolts on all the bike. Uh, all the heads are on the left hand side of the bike. Obviously you can install it with the bolts on the other side, but just to keep everything looking uniform, we're going to start off here and get that on there. Alright. And we're just going to loosely get these guys into place. And once we get the skis on this guy and get it on the ground, then we're going to set those foot pegs to the desired position. Alright guys, now it's on to unpackaging these skis so we can bolt them onto the, the bike and get it on the slopes. There we go here. So yep, we do have our, our ski bolts here. So our skis do come from the factory with a factory wax um, and the edges are all sharp. Uh, you know, these skis, uh, the conniption sticks, you know, can just bolt straight to the bike, you know, without a, a tune or anything out of the box. Um, we do have some just a quick recommendation for them. Um, you know, that can sometimes, you know, help with adjusting to the new ski bike. Um, basically what we would do is just do a little bit of a detune on the edge. Um, right here as the edge lifts up at the tail and also um, at the nose of the ski. Uh, I'll show you how to do that real quick. You know, either got a soft stone or ski edge file. What we're looking at doing is right as the ski you know is lifting off the ground here, we're just gonna detune that forward edge. Um, you know, just kind of taking off that sharp edge. You know, just give it a little bit. Not gonna hang up. We're also gonna come around, look at that same thing as you know, right where the edge kind of comes off. We're just gonna hit that right before it and wrap that around. Um, you know, we will be doing uh, more in-depth ski tuning. Uh, vids, you know, as we kind of work through the season here, but you know, this is just something real basic. Hit it with kind of this is a soft brush just to kind of get rid of that. All right. And the ski installation is identical um, for the front and the rear ski. And then once again, just like the stem, try to snug that ski down. You know, don't just crank down the back bolts, try to work back and forth a little bit. You, you know, I mean, you got the Loctite on there and stuff, we know where we are. Good, so, yeah, we just wanna snug that. You know, we don't necessarily need to use a torque wrench, but, you know, if you want to, you know, where this guy's gonna be about six to seven Newton meters, you know, and we can just hit hit these guys. Last piece that we're going to install is our little ski leash here. Some riders will remove them but you know, the bikes all ship with them and stuff. Um, just nice in case you know someone you know doesn't tighten their bolts tight enough or so there is a safety precaution there. Next we're going to move on to uh, setting our uh, um, slip mechanism here. Um, we got two pinch bolts down here uh, you know, once again, we want about an even gap on either side, just like our stem plate was. And uh, torque spec on these guys is 75 inch pounds, um, which roughly is about 6.2 newton meters. Pop the bike out of the stand. We're in the home stretch. 
Um, at this point here, I'm going to snug up the torsion arms here, which is then going to hold this in place and keep the ski in the proper orientation. All right, guys, now kind of we get to stand over the bike kind of for the first time. This is where we're going to try to, you know, center that handlebar and you know, kind of look with the ski, visually go down, sight the fork. I like to generally look at the crown of the fork here and the bottom section of the handlebar kind of tilt back and try to get a nice even gap that I'm looking down at the floor. Um, at this point here too, we have our compression cap, which is the last step of our headset. Um, when we tighten this down, we want that snug. We don't want to overload the bearing or anything. All right, guys, next we are on to the foot pegs. You know, we have them, you know, where we can move them by hand here. You get that foot positioned to where I like. They seem pretty even. <clears throat> Going to grab my 8 mil Allen key here, come around here, hold that bolt in place, and snug this up. Alright guys, we're just going to go over the rear shock real quick here. Um, we got a the little red dial is going to be your rebound adjustment. Uh, rebound adjustment is going to control how fast the shock recoils after it's compressed. Alright guys, now we're on to the fork. Just a real quick run through. We got an air spring. We got a compression adjustment and rebound adjustment at the bottom. In the owner's manual on page 7, there is a uh, air chart guide. You're going to go to the stitch model. It is the bottom bar here. And it is going to give your rider weight. You're going to have to convert it from kilograms to pounds. But yep, and then depending on your range here, the lower one is going to give you the range of air pressure. Um, you do need to use a shock pump. Um, you cannot use a traditional bicycle floor pump to put air into your fork here. Um, these pumps are available at any bike shop you walk into. All right, guys, we're basically ready to go. Final thing is just maybe taking a look and setting that seat angle. Um, you know, a lot of people will run it just flat. Others will kind of angle it up a little bit. Uh, but, you know, for this purpose of the video, we're going to keep it flat there. Take a look. We do have a little bit of movement on your rails, just like on a typical bike seat. Um, most of the time, running it centered is all you'll need. Um, do remember earlier in the video, I did discuss from the secure rest uh, point here to the top of the saddle it really should not be over 20 inches um, therefore when you are loading on the chairlift with the bike vertical next to you that's going to fit on the depth of the seat and go down real quick there's six mil make sure that we like our angle snug that guy up and then I think it's finally time Go enjoy your new bike on the slopes.